I don't want to set the world on fire I just want to start a flame in your heart In my heart I have but one desire And that one is you No other will do Hey, what's up guys? JB here. So I really hope that you all enjoyed that intro. I I did put a ton of time into it and I really do love how it came out. I really wanted to invoke a lot of nostalgia there because for me, Kefka is just that, pure nostalgia. Final Fantasy VI was a gateway for me as a child, not only into the world of Final Fantasy, but really the RPG genre in general. And to be honest, you know, my life has really never been the same since I picked up that game. Certainly after that, it influenced other choices, you know, in the games I played. uh, Games such as Chrono Trigger, Breath of Fire, and Shining Force. But to me, Kefka is a huge part of what has made Final Fantasy VI an all-time great game as far as I'm concerned, and certainly my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time. So I couldn't be more happy that he is going to be joining War of the Visions. Of course, after what they did with Golbez, I think most of us knew that it was just a matter of time before he was going to be coming into the game since his character model is already in there in the assets. I, for one, am glad he's he's finally here, although here on Global, you know, we are going to have to wait a, a few more months before he does arrive for us here. Now, I have been talking a lot here on the channel, kind of wondering and speculating when Fire would finally get another 100 cost units, having been over a year since Satya, you know, first came into the game. Although Fire has definitely had, you know, several 90 cost units come through that are very solid. But that is going to be enough waxing nostalgia for today. It's time to actually get into the hard numbers for Kefka and of course deep dive into those skills and abilities and see if Kefka is going to finally be that 100 cost unit that Fire fans have been waiting so patiently for. So with that said, let's dive into it and let's take a look. So Kefka will be a 100 cost fire unit. He has base 3-1 movement and he can wear hats and cloth. Looking at the TMR, in terms of the base stats, it's going to be another 4 agility accessory. Just a week after we did look at the first of its type, which was a Sweetheart Miranda's. So just as I said with hers, I, this can be pretty clutch for agility tuning. The effect on it, I think, is decent enough, you know, if you are going for this specific combination of effects of both magic and agility. It does have a 32 TP cost on it, so you can actually get a, a decent amount of, of AP there by using it. So it's it's a fine enough TMR and uh, nothing crazy here, you know, nothing that I would go in and rush to pull Kefka, you know, just for this particular item. Now looking at the base stats here for Kefka, it's, it's a relatively flat line here for him across the board. You know, one thing about Energist or, or sort of Glove Mages in general is that they do tend to have lower base stats and kind of as a, as a class. So Kefka is going to be no different here. I will say though that that HP at just over 3,800 innate, you know, that is going to be right smack at the current UR average. You know, we have had a lot of high HP bruisers come in over the course of the game. That was once kind of considered a, you know, a very high value in general. But despite Kefka being you know, right at the average there, I do think that this is a very respectable total for him, you know, especially considering that he is a backline mage unit. Now, the one elephant in the room and sort of the exception to the rule that I was just talking about there, uh, Kefka's base magic here at 409, at the time of his release, it's going to put him at 6 overall in the game. A very significant for a unit like this, and we'll actually take a closer look at what that's going to do for him when we touch on his passives and, and the different builds for him. He is going to definitely come back to Earth here in terms of that total innate magic value at just 472. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be a big problem for him. He's going to be able to get to a very, very nice magic total. Now, things do start to fall off for him just a bit when we do consider his dex, luck, and agility. In terms of the dex and agility, despite the lower totals that you see here, I'm not going to be worried about those either, uh, simply because he does have access to that Energist job that we were just mentioning. The luck total here though uh, is definitely pretty tough for him and it is going to affect his natural accuracy here. He is coming in at just 160 base accuracy, which is very pedestrian and definitely less than I would like to see on a unit such as this. 
Now shifting up to Kefka's mastery ability, he is picking up a bit of magic res penetration uh, as well as some area resist, which is definitely gonna add a, a bit to his survivability. In a completed build, Kefka is gonna be able to achieve a, a very solid amount of area resist and we'll take a closer look at that once we get into the mock build. Now Kefka is gonna be coming in with just two base defense and zero spirit, so definitely not a great start here for his mitigation. As we have been seeing with most modern units though, he does make up for it significantly with his resistances. He is going to be particularly strong against both missile and magic damage with 20 and 15% resist respectively. And he does have a little bit of slash resist here as well coming in at 10%. His main weakness is going to be that pierce damage. Uh, he's coming in at negative 10 there. And then he's just neutral to strike damage. Now for his ailment resist, he does have a 50% resist to stop, which is one that I always like to have. He does get 50% against sleep. That's not one that we see, you know, very often out there in the meta. Uh, and then finally he does have 10% to stun, which can can come in handy from time to time. All right, so quickly taking a look at Kefka's transcendence upgrades. No surprises here, he's gonna be tagged as a magical attacker. And of course, that's gonna be heavily focused on that magic attack value. He could pick up 180 additional magic there at max reincarnation. Now looking at Kefka's 140 mastery ability, he is getting just a bit more survivability here. 15 defense, which is gonna put him at 17 total. And then he is picking up another 10 area resist here as well. So that's gonna give him 20% before we get into any gearing or vision cards. Aside from that, he is getting just a bit more magic potency here with the 10 human killer. And then the main portion of the upgrade is gonna be an enhancement to his job 25 ability. And we will take a closer look at that once we get into the skills overview. But basically that's skill does have a conditional modifier to it and this is going to add haste to the list of those conditions uh, and then it does add a haste dispel to the skill on top of it. So it does seem like overall this will be a nice addition to Kefka's kit. He's getting a little bit of damage here, a little bit of survivability so going to kind of help him out uh, you know all around. All right moving on to passives and counters. Very nice passive number one here for Kefka. This is going to be the upgraded EX version that he has. 24% magic, 40% spirit pen, and then a reduced casting time of 25%. This is definitely gonna be an always on here for Kefka. It is gonna be his main source of spirit penetration. And then that reduced skill activation time is gonna be a big help there for some of his uh, magic abilities. Now I do think in the majority of cases, you're gonna to want to run that first passive there alongside his Energist passive, Hyper Vitality, which is option number four here. Now this passive in particular, I think is probably the main reason why they have tended to be a bit more conservative with uh, Energist base stats. And when you see the numbers on the passive, 30% agility, 60% dex and magic, it's it's really not hard to see why. It's it's a massive boost. Uh, it's gonna be massive not only for his damage, but you know also for his speed. And just for some perspective here, this passive alone is gonna net him 244 raw magic and a whopping 16 agility. So personally, I think that I'd be running this one in pretty much all cases. Of course, the downside with this passive has always been the turn count associated with it. It is just gonna be effective for the first five turns of battle. So I think considering that turn counts on this passive, it does incentivize you to want to get Kefka into the fray quickly and just kind of blow somebody up. But I think it is certainly something that you want to consider when, you know, maybe on a bigger map where you're not able to actually get into the fray until maybe turn three or so. Uh, but then certainly in manual play where the, there can tend to be longer buffing sequences going on before you actually have your main battle. Now, aside from those options, you know, you could look at the mobility passive here. I think though that's going to be pretty niche, you know, especially for auto play. Now shifting over to the counters here for Kefka, uh, he does have a couple of pretty good ones I think that he can take advantage of. He does get an all new one from his main job. It has a 50% chance of triggering on any damage type. And then it does have a high chance to poison the target there for three turns. Poison is at a 20% potency, so essentially 20% of the target's HP pool will drop per tick. Now I do like this counter ability, obviously it's, it's very low rich and appropriate I think when you think about Kefka and some of the things he does in Final Fantasy 6. I'm not sure though that this would be my first choice to run on him in most situations. I think Gumi was was just a bit conservative here with the range on this counter. It is coming in with just a range 2 on this one. I think if Kefka is in the range of the enemy where this one is going off, the, the fight may not be going all that well at that point. And it's likely that Kefka may not be able to survive long enough to be 
able to reap the full benefits of a three turn poison. So for that reason, I think that I would prefer Kefka use his physical reflex ability. Uh, I think that that would give him a chance at avoiding damage entirely, you know, rather than getting hit and hoping this poison procs off. So I do overall like it here a little bit better. All right, so let's look at Kefka's all new main job here next and let's start with his buffs. First and foremost, his self buff. This is gonna give him two casts of re-raise. Now this one is an enhanced re-raise similar to Queen Masheri's. He does add 20 CT into his bar when he gets revived. Uh, and then he is getting a magic buff on top of that of 60%, which does last for three turns on the re-raise trigger as well. Now for Kefka's party buff, he's giving 20 spirit and 20 area resist to both himself and his allies, while also providing them five hate. A very interesting buff here. Uh, immediately coming to mind is Sadali's Immortal Dogma ability, which does also provide that hate mechanic to a teammate. So I think that this is a buff you can get very creative with in autoplay. Uh, maybe running Kefka in an evade party, for example, with Yuffie or, or, or other fire evaders. Or even just running Kefka alongside a couple of stout bruisers who may be able to take a few hits there. Now obviously that hate can be dispelled, uh, so that is going to be the limitation of it. But overall it's a great skill, it's, it's fairly unique in the game and I do like it quite a bit. Now moving on to his attack skills, uh, skill 1 is a low AP finisher skill. Pretty decent range on this one, getting up to that range 4 and it has a range height of 1. It is an instant cast ability with that low 121% mod. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, it will actually be able to hit quite a bit harder than that because it does have that 25 spirit break there attached to it coming in before the damage is calculated. Now, skill number two is a large diamond AoE. It's going to be topping out at that range of five with a 185% modifier. Now, prior to the damage, it has a 25% magic in peril. And then post damage, it does have a triple break, 40% uh, attack and magic, and then 20% agility. So this is basically just a huge trinity break skill here. Now, in most calculations, that I've done personally or have seen others do, the 40% attack magic breaks, they, they generally translate to somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 10 to 15% uh, damage uh, reduction, you know, kind of depends on, on the base stats of the units that you actually hit with it. So that can definitely be pretty helpful for your overall survivability, especially when you do have such a wide area of effect here and could potentially hit multiple units with it. Now, one caveat of this particular skill is it's a very slow 200 cast speed, but if you do include his innate cast reduction, uh, maybe pair that with a trust stone, you'd be looking at a three tick cast on this spell. For me in autoplay, that three tick zone is just slow enough, you know, that depending on how the CT is lining up, uh, it can force the AI to shy away from using it uh, in some cases. So I think if you were trying to maximize the usage of this skill, you definitely would want to get it down to a two tick cast and that would require the usage of Siren or Valifor to get uh, that additional cast time reduction. Now, now Kefka's third skill here is a single target range 4 with a range height of 2. So again, pretty nice range on this one. Two effects are coming in pre-damage. It will completely shut down counters here for three turns. And then it is also going to dispel re-raise from your target. Uh, so very nice utility on this one. We also have a, a very big modifier here at 220%. And this is non-elemental damage here. So that is pretty significant as well. If you were faced against maybe a water opponent here with Kefka who had been stacking very high fire resist, this is something at least that he could use to, to do a bit of damage. This skill though, like all of the skills in his main kits is reflectable so that does mean that uh, you know Celis's runic ability obviously can shut this one down so obviously that matchup you know it's still going to be very bad for him you know despite having this non-elemental damage that's okay though I, I don't think that we were looking at Kefka here to really swing the balance there in the Celis matchup this is going to be a very good skill for him to have access to in general though because we do have a unit like Sephiroth who they have given Omni resistance to and he's obviously going to excel against you know many different elements you know depending on his build so uh, having this non-elemental damage I think is you know even more important than ever before. Now skill number four is going to be a range three with a plus one on the cross AoE. It's topping out at a range height of two there on the area of effect. We have a 165% mod and it does have an added 60% condition 
additional modifier. So it does top out at 225% if the target has one of these four conditions. Poison, Silence, Confusion, or Haste. And it does also dispel that haste as well if it is present. Now that last portion, you know, regarding haste on the target, that is what is getting upgraded as part of his 140 Transcendence. So again, it's going to be another big modifier here on the skill. Uh, and it is definitely nice that this is going to be another instant cast ability for him. Now last up, we do have Kefka's Limit Burst. And this one is definitely all about the mayhem. Again, we're going to have a large range 5 diamond pattern here. And we are going to have a 67% base chance to confuse anyone that this one hits. So he's going to have people running around and hitting their teammates and, and causing all sorts of problems there. I do really love that thematically for Kefka. Uh, and I think that it is going to make him uh, pretty annoying to uh, to face off against. Pretty standard LB here though. Otherwise, it's coming in with that standard 200% LB mod. Now in terms of a couple holes here that, that I'm kind of spotting right away, a no shell removal here for Kefka and, I'm, and no barrier break as well here in the main kit. He is going to get that though in one of his sub jobs. So let's take a look at those here next. All right, so starting off here with Kefka's main job sub, the first skill is going to be a, another long range cross AOE here. It's going to top out at that range of five. Another nice modifier here has that 185%. Now this one is coming in with not one, but two different status ailments here. Uh, both silence and blind are, are going to be coming in at that 25% chance. So I do actually like this skill. I think this one is pretty decent. Uh, I'm not really sure that it's uh, enough to to, to really draw me to, to use this uh, this particular sub job because the other one I think is somewhat of a throwaway. It's a it's a TP based debuff of 40% uh, attack. So obviously there's a there's quite a bit of overlap there with you know one of the skills that we looked at there in the main kit. It does have a 25% chance to slow, which is kind of interesting. But but in terms of autoplay, you know the only time he's really going to be looking to use this particular skill is if he can't actually hit the unit. You know that's one example, or uh, if he's run out of AP, which you know, is you know for a mage unit like this that is actually pretty rare. Not all is lost there though. We do have two very nice other sub job options here for Kefka. He does have arithmetician, a very old job that I think you know most of us are, are very familiar with at this point. Now, obviously this job is known for its very long range and large area of effect skills and they do get up to a range six with uh, very nice range heights which is another nice feature of this job they are all instant casts so it does give him a bit of attacking flexibility here with this job in autoplay i will say that that range can sometimes be a double-edged sword uh, if a faster enemy has been able to come into your targeting zone before you've been able to buff up that can completely throw off sort of your initial battle plans there so definitely something to consider whether you leave some of those skills on if you were to use this job. Now Kefka is going to be getting some healing capability with this job as well so something that he might be able to use kind of in between strikes for guild war or maybe to put to use in manual play. Now lastly Kefka will be getting the energist job here. It does give him a couple of alternate damage type attacks with uh, some magic missile skills. They are going to be a lower modifier though so I don't think that they're super compelling but you know Kefka doesn't really have a ton of magic resist penetration innately so uh, you know maybe something to kind of have your bets there you know depending on the target i do think that the main draw of this sub job is going to be that twin chi rupture skill Obviously, it has that huge modifier there coming in at 245%, uh, but it does have a magic barrier break there on top of it. And, uh, you know, despite the line pattern, it is uh, AOE as well. So you can hit up to two targets with that. Now, obviously lacking here in both the main kit and the sub kit is, is any kind of guaranteed hit ability or even any sort of enhanced accuracy buff or, or skill here. So uh, that will definitely make life difficult for Kefka, you know, if he's going to be faced with any sort of evade units. Because as we saw with his base stats, you know, his innate accuracy is very much middle of the pack. What I will say is that Kefka does have some sneaky TP based abilities that uh, he can take advantage of in those evade matchups. That first one being level three disable, which comes in from arithmetician, but also rejuvenation, which he gets from energist. Uh, and that's going to sleep your target. Now, both of those do have an enhanced chance to land them, uh, especially that rejuvenation. If you're able to get in early in the battle, it actually starts off with a 49% chance to land it. Now, the thing about both sleep and disable is that, you know, when you're under those two statuses, you're incapacitated at that point, meaning that, you know, your evade at that point is going to be 0%. You're going to be a guaranteed hit uh, for anyone that's going to be attacking you at that point, even Kefka. So if he's able to get lucky and land one of those ailments, that, that is kind of a sneaky way that he can help uh, in those evade matchups. Now, alongside Kefka's release, we will be seeing an all new job based vision card. 
The card itself is going to feature an iconic moment from Final Fantasy VI with the Warring Triad high above the ground atop the floating continent. This is a sequence that I will never forget from Final Fantasy VI because on my first playthrough of the game when I was very young, uh, my favorite character is Shadow and in an act of heroism he saved my party there on that first playthrough but unfortunately he was lost uh, and you know I was absolutely crushed as a result of it. So as I mentioned there, this is going to be one of those job or weapon type vision cards. Uh, and this one can be utilized by Gloves, uh, Ninja Blades, the Warrior Sword group, and the Devout Staff group as well. A fairly average stats here on the card, but it does notably have a, you know, a pretty decent amount of HP and then some base spirit here as well. The bestowed ability is, is nice. It's going to give uh, Kefka some additional missile resist there. And then that 10% magic is, would net him another 40% magic there on top. Now the party effect is going to be 42 magic attack, 12 defense, and 25% HP. So it's going to be a nice mixture of both offense and defense here on the card. So the glove group in particular is starting to get, you know, several options here amongst these job VCs. It's not quite reaching the, that fist status yet where, you know, they pretty much have all of the nice effects that you'd want covered. But it's really not all that far off, you know, maybe just needing another one to two cards. Now vision cards with hit points are, are ones that I generally like to target in my secondary slots because they do actually retain 80% of their effectiveness you know when you do slot them there. Now in terms of the units who can actually take advantage of the card we do have quite a few fire units on the list and that's going to include nearly all of the the recent releases for the elements. Uh, unfortunately Terra and Regalia Glassy are, are going to be absent though and you know those are probably two of the units that you'd most like to kind of use that magic attack effect there with. Now of course fire is going to be tied into both the lightning and the wind elements via their dark esper so, you know, that is generally where I like to look for synergy and kind of pair with these job based cards here. If you kind of look at the list there for wind, you know, there's not a ton of units, but uh, more the merrier actually, I think could be, you know, a pretty good pair for Kefka and, and kind of take advantage of this card. She, of course, is a global exclusive, so, uh, you know, she should be added in, into this card when it does get released here. Now, there are quite a few units on the card here for both ice and dark as well. So uh, overall, I say it's, you know, it's a pretty decent selection of units here on this particular particular vision card. Now there are going to be two pieces of new equipment they're going to be coming in alongside Kefka and I'm going to touch on them very quickly here. Uh, the first one is going to be a new glove weapon uh, and it's going to be specialized uh, just for Kefka. It's going to have three unit specific uh, passives there for him. So all together with this weapon you know he's going to be getting that 20 spirit pen, 15 magic attack, 10 human killer and then that 8 area resist. Now I have highlighted the magic version of the glove here but I do think that the crit version could be pretty interesting as well if you were going for a crit focused build. Uh, Kefka having that energist sub job and access to hyper vitality. His decks can get very very high Hi. Uh, and he can get to a point where he can very reliably crit if you do back it up, you know, with some passives in your build. Now, one of the things that I like most about this item is that it is going to give Kefka access to even more area resist here in the passives, which is something that is uh, generally pretty hard to find, you know, outside of uh, something like Brigandine. So overall, this is a pretty cool weapon for Kefka. You know, definitely build this one out if you are going for him. Otherwise, you know, we do have the Elven Gloves, which uh, also does carry that 20 Spirit Pen. So uh, assuming that you have that item, I don't think that there's much reason to build this one otherwise. Now with the rerun of the Final Fantasy VI collaboration and the trial that comes along with that, uh, we will be getting access to Kefka's shirt or blouse here as well. I actually like this item quite a bit. It's a pretty nice defensive piece. It's going to have 32 crit evasion here between the base stat and the passive that comes on it. Now I'm going to be highlighting the shield version here. I think that that has the, the overall best mix of stats that, that I like the most. And this one's going to come with 16 defense, 9 spirit, 451 HP, pretty well rounded. Specifically for the Final Fantasy VI cast though, it, it is much better. It's picking up two additional passives and that's going to be 20 accuracy as well as 10 human killer. Now this human killer is going to be untyped, meaning that it affects both magical and physical damage. So that means that Locke, Terra, anyone here in Final Fantasy VI will be able to leverage that quite well. It does also mean that it will stack with Magical Human Killer that we just saw there on Kefka's glove or even from Terra's ribbon from the first run of the collaboration. So that can certainly be a nice offensive boost there if you if you wanted to use both of those items. But I think this can also be, you know, a potential alternative to an Alex ring here because it does have that big uh, 20 accuracy passive here as well. So if you can sort of replace the base accuracy of the Alex ring elsewhere in your builds, you know, this is something that you might be able to use and, and kind of get a bit more uh, defensive passives here. All right, flashing over to our timeline now here for 2023. 
Uh, here in Global, we are just entering our third anniversary period, and there is just a lot of new stuff that is coming our way. We are going to be anticipating the return of Final Fantasy VI and, and Kefka's release into the game approximately three months from the release of this video. So that is going to be plenty of time to save up, uh, you know, for the fans out there that, that do want to pull him. Of course, you are going to need to make it through this barrage of units first, you know, before you do get there. So uh, much easier said than done. Now, in terms for partners in crime for Kefka here along the way, uh, we do have Yuffie that's going to be coming in uh, imminently for us. Uh, and then Roy Mustang, who we did talk about earlier from uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Now, of course, Gumi is still drumming up increased need for these fire units as well. Uh, in JP, as you can see here on the timeline, two new ice units are, are coming in, uh, Reagan, and then uh, just this past week, uh, Howlet just came into the game. Uh, both of them are, are very strong frontline slash units there for ice. On the flip side though, no water units here on the short horizon, at least that we know about. Now, of course, we did just recently get a couple of those, but uh, I do think that this is gonna give fire, you know, just a little bit of breathing room here over the next couple of months. Now, as always, we are expecting, you know, some kind of global surprise or, or global unit here, you know, somewhere in this picture. That is gonna be anyone's best guess as to when that actually might happen. If I was a betting man though, you know, I would look no further than this early April timeframe. With them pushing up Amnilis on the schedule and kind of clearing out a little bit of room there, that could potentially be the time that they decide to finally release Addison Ray into the game, or maybe just some other GL exclusive, you know, coming in from FFBE. If that's the case, you know, personally, I would really hope for Olive or Roberta. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed. So next up is going to be a mock build that I put together for Kefka, and I have decided to make a team today that is going to be focused around glove-based synergy, and not only glove-based synergy, but I am going to be linking together two complementary elements here of fire and wind. Now, as we did talk about a little bit earlier, Kefka does have, you know, a couple of similarities to Sadali. So, you know, if you're familiar with how you might use him, I think that you could use Kefka in similar ways. So that is going to be the general idea behind this build. But at the same time, Kefka is going to be able to help cover the ice weakness of these two other units. And those two units today are going to be Joom, who is going to be our frontliner. And then I'm going to have more the merrier here as well. Now, I have specifically chosen the these two units, you know, not only because of the complementary element and some of the VC synergy there, but because these two wind units, you know, also do excel, you know, very well against evade units. Now, Joom, of course, uh, she is just one of the, the best frontliners in the game, you know, when it comes to tanking slash damage. And then I'm going to have more the merrier, who is one of the most accurate units in the game. Uh, and she is going to share that weapon type with Kefka, so uh, there's going to be big size synergy there, you know, in terms of the VC effects for them both. Now, quickly going through the build here, I did want to highlight, you know, both new pieces of equipment that we just looked at. And that's going to give him access to, you know, several nice passives here, including those two types of human killer there to really build up his damage. Now, I do pair that with Mashiri's TMR, uh, definitely one of my favorites, you know, in terms of healing up in multi-round PvP or uh, especially for manual play as well. Now for an Esper, I am going to be going with Dark Ramu. Uh, for my vision cards, uh, I'm going to be utilizing four different glove cards, uh, two of which we already do have today in Global. And that is going to start with Minwoo's VC, huge 60% magic as well as that 20 area resist on it. A Joom does benefit from this card, uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing for this team. Now along with that, I'm going to have a Fearsome Foe Appears, which came from our Dragon Quest collaboration which just ended recently, and that has 15% agility and a nice amount of magic attack and slash resist on there as well. I'm going to have Kefka's card as well that we just looked at that's going to give even more magic attack, some defense, and then some HP. And then finally I do have Roy Mustang's VC. This one's going to give a bit of magic resist penetration as well as some pierce resist and then some crit rate. So we are getting just a ton of power and impact from these cards onto the two mages. Uh, not all of the cards are going to be impacting Joom, but, you know, overall I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, where her stats end up, you know, she is in a pretty good spot. And that's because I am tying all this together with the Dark Tetra Vision card there on Joom. That, of course, is going to get me some Missile Resist, uh, as well as that um, single target resistance, which would be very important for the mitigation of my party. Now, quickly taking a look at the Trust Stones here, I am going to be going for an HP set for Kefka here on the left. 
It's, it's always one of my favorites to cover a variety of situations and scenarios in the game. If I was trying to enhance his accuracy and really go all in on that, you know, you would definitely want to put a Lux set over on this side. But in terms of this build, you know, where I do have Joom and uh, also more the Marrier who can help cover that weakness, I'm content with Kefka just sort of relying on that sleep ability there that we looked at earlier. Now for the passive abilities, I am going to go with Missile and Slash Resist there on Stone 1. Uh, stone 2, as always, I'm going to have HP and Luck. And then the third one here, I am going with Ice and Water Resist. Now, obviously, Ice and Water teams, they're going to be, you know, at direct odds here with Fire and Winds. Now, of course, if that Ice Water team is fronted by Celis, it's not going to bode well for our team. But I do always like to sort of hedge my bets. That's kind of just one of my personal uh, build philosophies. I think some other nice options here for Stone 3, you know, could be some various forms of debuff resistance. Uh, generally, I do like Crit Evade as well, but that is going to be covered already there by Kefka's shirt. Now, on the right side, I am going to be going for an agility set. Uh, unless you are going that accuracy build, um, you know, I think that this is going to be the best way to go for Kefka. Uh, and on this side, I'm just going to be filling in some offensive passives. Uh, the reduced skill activation, you know, as we kind of alluded to earlier, I think that is one of the key ones that you're definitely going to want for Kefka. And then I am kind of going for a little bit more of a crit centric build here. So I do have some dex and crit damage there on the passives as well. So that is the build, guys. Uh, there's going to be a ton of magic firepower here. And, and outside of, you know, an elemental counter, you know, Kefka, I don't think is going to be very easy to take down, you know, whatsoever. He's going to be sitting at 66% slash resist. He's got 42 missile resist here in the build. 48 area resist, as you can see there in the stats. Uh, and then he does have some nice defense, spirit, and HP numbers there for just for some general bulk there on top of it. I think the agility and magic stat here are, are probably the true highlights. 118 agility to go along with almost 1800 magic is uh, quite substantial. I uh, do remember that, you know, in these mock builds, I don't include any dream stats, you know, other than the dream ability itself. So if you do go ahead and reincarnate uh, Kefka, you know, you can certainly expect even higher numbers than this. Now, just a couple of notes here on the build. If you do go in and, and take a look at it, uh, Joom is not going to be benefiting from that DQ agility card. As I kind of talked about earlier, I'm, I'm aware of it and uh, I am fine with it. Uh, Joom's agility, as you can see, in the builder is still sitting uh, north of 100 and that's just because that dark tetra card is is absolutely insane her agility is going to be even higher you know in global because we do have that uh, bestowed ability on there for an additional 10 percent agility so she's going to be in the area of 106 and 107 agility in this build now my second note is if you are looking at more the merrier stats and they do look on the lower side that's because more doesn't exist over in jp and she is not getting credit for these job based vision cards so uh you know her stats are going to be looking a whole lot better, you know, once we do get access to all of these pieces here in Global. Now that said, if you do want to take a look at the finer details of the builds, as always, I'll go ahead and put a link to this one in the description. So what is my verdict today on Kefka? Starting with the positives here. Kefka is definitely going to be bringing that damage. He's got that high base magic stat. He has access to not one, but two different magic boosting passives, including one that is for 60%. That's going to allow him to achieve one of the highest magic stats that we have ever seen in the game. Now, not only that, he does have access to several dangerous status effects that will be able to wreak havoc on his enemies. Now, while he is certainly a cannon, you know, when it comes to his damage, unlike some other mages that have come before him, he is not going to be made out of glass. He has several survival tools at his disposal, including very high area resist, re-raise, a decent innate bulk and resistances, and even a physical reflex there to bail him out. Now, while his survivability is certainly well above average for a mage, he's definitely going to be designed to, to work best when he does have, you know, other units that are, are taking the heat off of him so he doesn't get singled out. Now, thankfully, Kefka does have the ability to bring that to the party innately with that buffable hate spell that we looked at, meaning that you don't necessarily need to run him alongside a classic tank. Now, on the other hand, uh, Kefka's Energist passive, you know, does come with its limitations. It does have just that five turn duration on its main passive, meaning that in prolonged fights, you know, he's definitely going to see a noticeable drop in his power, you know, if the fight is going on too long. Another weakness is that if you are relying on that hate mechanic in battle, you are going to be very vulnerable to enemy dispels which will make it easier for the enemy to single out Kefka and take him down quickly. Now, as we discussed over the course of the video, Kefka's accuracy is always going to be a concern and, and problem for him, uh, and that will expose him against top evade units. Now, while he can be built for accuracy, you know, you do need to dedicate your entire build to it in order for him to reliably hit evade units.
And if you do decide to go that direction, you know, it certainly will dull his overall impact in terms of the damage that he can bring. Now lastly, as is the case with many other mages out there, Kefka is going to be vulnerable to Celis. Not only in that he has no non-reflectable skills in his kit other than his limit burst, but also in that he's going to be smacked down with that hard elemental counter effect there as well. I will say though that after what Kefka and Emperor Gestal did to Celis in the game, uh, I guess it seems only fitting. So those are going to be the strengths and weaknesses as I see them today. When it comes down to it though, you know, I do believe that they have done right right by Kefka in War of the Visions, not only in infusing him with uh, good power and fair weaknesses, but by paying homage to the history and lore of this character within the confines of the game. While I don't see him at the top of the 100 cost pile, I do believe that Kefka will be a very powerful and dangerous mage attacker, uh, and will be a strong addition to the fire element and, and the glove weapon group alike. And I think that as someone that fans of the character can safely go for and get a return on their investment. So that is going to be my review today on Kefka. As always for my Final Fantasy characters, I, I did have to go the extra mile on this one. Uh, so I do really hope that you enjoyed the presentation and information that I had for you here today. I for one am going to be going all in for Kefka and the whole lot of the Final Fantasy VI units, you know, once they do return here to Global. I know for me personally, I can't wait to sort of reform Kefka and, and have him fight for justice alongside Terra and Locke. That will certainly be a very interesting party. Now, I don't think that Gumi is yet done with the fire element here for this year. I do think that there is going to be more to come, and that is certainly exciting to think about as well. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this unit, if you'll go for him, and, and who you would pair him with in a party. While you're down there, if you enjoyed the video today, hit that like button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And that's really all that I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.